The use of large language model AI in medicine raises complex legal and ethical issues. For instance, if AI reads an x-ray or a tissue pathology incorrectly, who is liable? Are we going to be subject to being held liable, lose our license, and perhaps even face some jail time based on something a machine did? In this second video in the series about AI in medicine, we'll be discussing how AI technology is transforming the healthcare industry and what it means for healthcare professionals and patients alike. We'll explore some of the ways that AI can help medical staff make more informed decisions, improve patient outcomes, and ultimately save lives. We'll also look at the problems and pitfalls of relying on AI in medicine. So before we dive into how artificial intelligence is changing medicine, let's define what we mean by large language model AI. Essentially, this is a type of artificial intelligence that uses vast amounts of data to interpret language and learn how to complete tasks. Some of the most well-known examples of large language model AI currently include ChatGPT and Google's BERT. These programs can be used to search for information, but they are so much more powerful. Having built-in algorithms and deductive reasoning, which allows the program to sort through the data and determine things like cause and effect, as well as offering solutions to problems. The use of AI is predicted to drastically change medicine in several ways in the future. So let's look at some of those changes. AI can analyze vast amounts of medical data and assist medical providers in making more accurate diagnoses and treatment recommendations. I mean, after all, how many times have you sat down in front of the chart of a complex patient that you're about to see and you are desperately trying to review all their records in the chart, figuring out what is current problems versus old problems, what medications they're actually taking, when their last labs were and what they said, what surgical history or family history is relevant. All of that takes so much time and no human can accurately go through and assimilate all of that information in the little bit of time that we're given to do so. But an AI program can. It can search every single thing in that chart and pull out the relevant data to the chief complaint that the patient is presenting for. And it can do all of that in a matter of seconds. It can even print you out a brief synopsis report, helping to catch you up to speed and pointing out any relevant history before you go in to see the patient. This will help us to triage patients faster, to find accurate diagnoses quicker, and ultimately save lives and suffering. Next, AI will help usher in the age of personalized medicine. As I mentioned, AI can be used to analyze all patient data and therefore it can produce personalized treatment recommendations based on each patient's unique characteristics and medical history. Can you imagine a time when a DNA sample will be uploaded into the record and then the AI will be able to recommend specific diet and lifestyle changes based on genetic risk factors and current comorbidities. We'll be able to create a tailored preventative screening calendar for that patient, and we'll be able to identify which treatments are likely to work best for that particular patient's medical condition, what their insurance covers, their medical history and response to previous treatments and to their specific DNA. Not only can AI do all of that and give you the best possible personalized treatment for that patient, but it also can then instantly produce patient education and instruction resources written in a level that the patient can comprehend and in their own preferred language. AI is also going to increase access to healthcare. AI can help address healthcare disparities by providing more accurate and accessible care to underrepresented or marginalized patient groups. For instance, AI-powered telemedicine and chatbots can enable patients to ask questions, get triaged, and sometimes even receive medical care remotely without having to travel to a physical location. This can be particularly beneficial for those patients who live in rural or remote areas or who have mobility issues. Now, yes, we already have telemedicine, but these are visits that can happen at any time of the day, any place, anywhere. They are interactions with the AI system, not with an actual provider. 
Another great way that AI is going to help increase access to care is by offering AI-powered language translation that can help healthcare providers more easily communicate with patients who speak a different language. And AI-powered devices and platforms can enable remote monitoring of patients with chronic conditions which could improve patient outcomes and reduce the need for hospital visits. AI can improve research and drug development. AI can help in the discovery of new drugs by analyzing vast amounts of data, such as genetic and molecular data, and identify potential new drug candidates. AI algorithms can also help in predicting the efficacy and safety of potential drugs and help design better clinical trials, thereby reducing the time and cost of drug development. Another thing I thought was really cool that AI can do is that it can analyze existing medications to see if they can be repurposed. AI can analyze the existing drug structures and all of the efficacy and safety data available and suggest new ways that the medication may be used or ways it can be modified in order to treat other conditions. Again, this can help reduce the time and cost of drug development and bring new treatments to patients more quickly. And AI can help providers with decision support. It can offer up a list of differential diagnoses that take into account all of the patient's history, symptoms, labs, and physical exam findings. It can help us zero in on the correct diagnosis faster, even if it's a more rare or complex condition. AI has already been taught how to read and interpret x-rays, MRIs, pathology slides, and even evaluate skin lesions. Imagine having instantaneous reads on imaging or knowing if a lesion needs biopsy right away without having to wait for a radiologist read or a specialist visit. And of course, AI can help with treatment options, suggesting specific personalized therapies for each patient. And if it suggests a diagnosis or a treatment that we're not familiar with, it can then generate information and reference sheets for us providers and a more simplified education instruction sheet for patients. These are just a few of the examples of how AI can improve healthcare, and they are very exciting. AI has the power to greatly change and improve medicine. However, it's not all roses and butterflies. There are many dangers and pitfalls that come with the heavy incorporation of AI into medicine. So let's look at a few of those issues. Number one is the lack of trust in AI, and the flip side, reliance on AI. Two AI programs, including ChatGPT, has been put to the test and has actually passed all three levels of the USMLE. That's pretty impressive that a computer program can do that because those questions are not just simple rote memory. They do involve some complex medical reasoning and to know that an AI program can do that kind of blows the mind a little bit. Now, while that's impressive, does that mean that you can always trust its answers? Well, there needs to be a healthy suspicion as to the validity of the responses, especially while AI is in its infancy. For example, some medical professionals testing ChatGPT have reported instances where they were given a suggestion for medical treatment that was unfamiliar to them, but that sounded kind of legitimate. So they asked ChatGPT for the sources to back up that answer. Well, the AI cited an article from a well-known journal. The only problem was that that citation that seemed legit wasn't even real. It didn't exist. Somehow the AI had strung together a citation. It had used a completely credible title, cited a medical journal that is highly regarded, and even pulled legitimate medical authors' names off of other articles. So obviously that's highly problematic, especially if the provider didn't take the time to delve into the resources that were cited, but just trusted the AI. However, even if all of the information is 100% correct, that presents another problem. There's a very real risk that medical providers may become too reliant on AI and trust its recommendations too much without fully understanding and thinking through the rationale behind the recommendations. This could lead to reduced level of critical thinking and decision-making, which ultimately will harm patient care. In fact, in order for medical providers to stay relevant, critical thinking and decision-making will need to become our best skills. Number two, this may not seem obvious, but AI can perpetuate bias and discrimination already existing in the medical system. How does this happen? 
Well, large language model AI can perpetuate biases and discrimination if it's trained on biased data or if the algorithms used to process the data are themselves biased. These can lead to incorrect diagnoses or treatment recommendations, particularly for underrepresented or marginalized patient groups. An example of this would be if the AI program was not shown enough images and explanations of different skin lesions on darker skin tones, thereby causing it to miss potential skin cancer in people of color. After all, a machine cannot diagnose something it hasn't been taught sufficiently on a particular topic. That is just one example of bias, and we will have to be very careful as we teach these machines that we are not introducing bias and discrimination. Number three comes privacy and security risks. The use of language model AI requires the storage and processing of sensitive patient data, which could be vulnerable to cyber attacks or data breaches. This could put patient privacy at risk and undermine the trust in the healthcare system. It also would mean even more problems and confusion when computer systems inevitably fail or when the electricity goes out. And talking about patient privacy, it also introduces the problem of whether patients have the right to refuse to have AI participating in their medical record. If it's already incorporated, that may be somewhat impossible to turn it on and off for individual patients. Next comes the legal and ethical concerns. And this is a big one, especially for us providers. The use of large language model AI in medicine raises complex legal and ethical issues. For instance, if AI reads an x-ray or a tissue pathology incorrectly and it results in harm to the patient, who is liable? The people who wrote the software? Maybe the medical experts who helped with the programming and uploading of data? Maybe it's the facility who purchased and decided to use that particular product? Or maybe the liability falls with the clinician who ultimately made decisions based on the AI information. Now, for those of us who work in healthcare, we know what the answer is. It's going to fall on the clinician. We are always going to be the scapegoat. If the pattern holds, then organizations are not going to shoulder the responsibility. It's going to fall on the clinician. And that's scary. And people may say, well, then the answer is to double check what the AI produces. Well, sure, we're gonna to have to do that to an extent, but how are we able to do that? If it is analyzing all this data that we do not have time to analyze in the first place, how are we going to check everything? Are we going to be subject to being held liable, lose our license, and perhaps even face some jail time based on something a machine did? Beyond that, there are other important legal and ethical concerns that pertain to the protection and ownership of patient data and potential impact on the provider-patient relationships. After all, patients reveal some pretty private things during medical visits, and who will be privy to that information and how will it be used? And finally, there's AI's impact on training and education. The adoption of AI in medicine requires significant training and education for healthcare professionals to ensure that they understand how to use the technology effectively and appropriately. This could be a significant investment for healthcare organizations. And as we've often seen in the past with EMRs, the training and time invested to make sure that we know how to use the programs effectively and efficiently have not been adequate so far. So do we really expect it to be much different when this technology comes on board? Overall, the use of large language model AI in medicine has the potential to revolutionize healthcare, drastically improving patient outcomes and helping relieve some of the pressures that are placed on medical providers. However, it's important to anticipate and address the potential problems, dangers, and pitfalls of using AI heavily in medicine in order to ensure that AI is used in a responsible, ethical, and effective manner. With all that AI has the power to do, some may wonder if medical providers, specifically PAs and NPs, will even have a place in medicine in the future. Well, that is a valid question. I'll address that topic and give you my opinion in the next video of this AI series. Keep an eye out for it, and as always, once it's out, I will put that link to that video here. Thanks for joining me on The Medicine Couch. Until next time, stay safe and stay sane. Bye.